Science matters. The topic for today is sea gas sting. Fascinating. Drives age-related inflammation and neurodegeneration. It is one of a number of studies that are focusing on the brain-body connection and especially the effects of inflammation on mitochondrial dysfunction in the aging phenomena. Dr. You go ahead now. Thank you so much, Reed. Well, as I always say, in each one of these sessions, we take a deep dive into recent research to bring to light objective scientific evidence on whatever the topic at hand is. And today, uh, let's look more closely at sea gas sting. We'll tell you what that means and how that drives age-related inflammation and neurodegeneration. It really is highlighting the importance of mitochondria and enzyme signaling, and it is coming to the fore more and more. So let's look at the actual evidence because science matters. Amen to that. Now, in our last broadcast, we discussed the secretory IgA or SIGA regulation of pathogenic gut fungi and its dysregulation in Crohn's disease, which we're seeing a lot of. So there were a number of questions, including this one, Dr. Gonshore. Why is it so important to test for H. pylori? Thank you. Well, that's a good question, actually. And it gets to the heart of uh, the issue of H. pylori, which has had, as you know, a very a checkered history for many, many decades. It was poo-pooed as having absolutely nothing to do with uh, the peptic ulcers, let alone anything else. But we know that helo, helicobacter pylori, we call it H. pylori, is a type of bacteria that is known now and is established to be a major cause of peptic ulcers in the esophagus, in the stomach, in the intestine. And there are a few different types of H. pylori testing that are available. So you can do stool antigen tests and the one that you see most often done, and that's the urea uh, breath test. And it bears repeating that H. pylori causes one of the most common human infections in the world. But H. pylori causes not only peptic ulcer disease, but as we highlighted in the last broadcast, the infection is an important factor for gastric cancer development, extremely important. So lastly, most people with H. pylori will never have signs and symptoms. And, and for those people, routine screening is not necessarily uh, required. However, if you're developing, if they develop stomach symptoms, including pain, nausea, poor appetite, burping or belching, bloating, if they're getting weight loss, then amongst any other test you're going to think of doing, H. pylori testing is highly recommended. Fantastic again. And of course, this is a standard screening for FDN world. We find a lot of it. And then if they have the symptoms that correlate, then we might actually do something about that. But I want to thank everyone for submitting your questions. They're really important to all of us as we learn together. And thanks, Dr. Goncher. Now let's jump in today's study about sea gas sting and how that drives age-related inflammation and neurodegeneration, please. Thank you very much. Well, I think everybody can see this. Can you guys see it as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's get into the heart of the matter and sea gas sting. And we're going to describe what that means drives age-related inflammation and because of that, neurodegeneration. And so this is a study that came out uh, in 2023. As I say, we are trying to give you very up-to-date information and to give you some kind of foundational underpinning of objective scientific evidence on which much of what we do during the day is based, I hope. And uh, this particular group uh, looked at this, this issue and some of the, uh, the comments that they made to begin with is that C gas sting pathway, this pathway is a driver for aging related inflammation in the peripheral organs and in the brain. So if you blockade 
the sea gas sting signaling. It could be a potential strategy to halt neurodegenerative processes during old age. So what are they talking about here? Well, we know that low-grade inflammation is a hallmark of old age, and it is really a central driver of much of the impairment and disease which one sees, which is associated with aging. So with aging, organs will undergo various changes that effectively are going to reduce their fitness, and it's going to impact overall health, such as having more susceptibility to disease on top of anything else. So often it is an aberrant inflammatory state, something that was not expected, something that is out of the ordinary in, in an inflammatory situation that's going to drive age-related decline. And what they're positing in this study is that there is a molecular signaling pathway, which is known as C-gas sting. Now, what does it stand for? Well, C-gas stands for cyclic GMP AMP synthase, which is a large cascading series of enzymatic pathways together with uh, an interferon a gene group, which is part of the uh, immune system uh, interferons, which together uh, detects DNA in cells. And it involves two proteins that when activated is going to trigger an immune response. Why? Because what it wants to do is to defend against viral and bacterial infections. So the C gas thing is really not a pathway that's waiting for people to age. It's there doing its thing all of our lives, triggering immune responses in order, as I said, to defend against viral and bacterial infections. But it does have a critical role in driving chronic inflammation and therefore functional decline during aging. So it's that same pathway, which normally is fighting against bacterial and viral infection that begins to have a negative impact, especially when one is aging. So activating the sting protein does what? It triggers a specific pattern of gene activity in amongst many cells, an important group, and those are the microglia. And the microglia are the immune cells in the brain that are surrounding the neurons and they're the immune fighters in the brain. It's the first line of defense in the brain. We've, gone, we've gotten to know an awful lot more about microglia, which when I was growing up, we knew almost nothing about them. Now we understand that they have a very powerful immune function. So these gene activation patterns, especially let's say in microglia, match those that are arising in the microglia in aging and in distinct neurodegenerative conditions, such as Alzheimer's disease. So because of the effect on the microglia in a subset of the population is going to lead to various types of diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases. So if you know that this sting protein uh, is having this kind of a detrimental effect, blocking it, as it turns out, by a particular entity called H151. It's a brain permeable compound. It can, by blocking the sting protein, you can suppress the inflammatory responses in these human cells and tissues, and therefore reduce, as a consequence of that, reduce age-related inflammation in multiple peripheral organs, as well as, and this is information coming from studies on mice, in the brain. And this will lead to an improvement in tissue function, including in brain function. And what do they seem to think may be causing all of this? Well, here we go. The mitochondria are involved. In this case, the mitochondrial DNA. It is a central activator of this C-gas thing signaling and the disrupted mitochondrial homeostasis. So given that you see this, we know that mitochondrial DNA in the, in the cell itself 
in the cytoplasm of the cell is a hallmark of aging and neurodegenerative disease. So we know that in microglia of old, old people, but not young mice, the DNA from the mitochondria begin to accumulate in the cell's cytoplasm. They shouldn't be doing that. The DNA is supposed to be sitting in the mitochondria. But if they're accumulating in the cytoplasm of the cell, that means something terrible has happened to the mitochondrion of that cell, which has allowed the DNA to escape. And so that is suggesting a possible mechanism where this sea gas sting pathway contributes to inflammation in the aging brain. And what do we mean? What is the mechanistic characterization of all of this? Well, mitochondrial DNA accumulates in the cytoplasm. Remember, that's not good. To stimulate aged cells, because it seems to happen in these aging cells. And that is providing a functional link between two central features of aging. And what are they? Mitochondrial dysfunction and inflammation. So the results of this study establish sting as an important driver of aging associated inflammation, both in the periphery and all the peripheral cells, as well as in the central nervous system. And it promotes the things we see in aging, frailty and cognitive decline. So the conclusions of the study is that together with previous studies, in models of Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, frontotemporal dementia, the list is very long. This study reveals notable convergence on sea gas sting signaling in chronic neurodegenerative conditions. And the findings establish that this pathway, this gas sting pathway is a driver of aging related inflammation both in peripheral organs and the brain, and reveals that a blockade of this gas sting signaling could be a potential strategy to halt neurodegenerative processes during old age. That would be wonderful if it was that simple, but definitely it is one of the key features. So what are the key takeaways? Low-grade inflammation is a hallmark of old age, and it's a central driver of aging associated impairment and disease, that, that low grade inflammation. C gas sting plays a critical role in driving this chronic low grade inflammation and therefore causing a functional decline during aging. And if you can blockade this C gas sting signaling, it could be a potential strategy to halt neurodegenerative processes during old age. And so that's our quick take on what I think is a, is a very important study. Fantastic, Dr. John Shore. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I read the study pretty thoroughly and it, I had to look up a lot of the big words, of course, but um, you know, what, what, could this be considered some kind of autoimmune condition? Because it's, Seems like, you know, the the DNA is being attacked. That's our self. Is it is it in that category? And are any of the interventions similar to other conditions like that? That's a good question, Reed, and a very prescient one because I think, as we know, as the years have gone on, many diseases and many inflammatory states have been shown to be autoimmune in terms of their initial. Uh, creation and the continuation of it, that there seems to be an autoimmune component. In this study, they didn't discuss that because I think that they don't have enough evidence that that's the case. But I would not be surprised if one begins to find that an autoimmune component uh, is an important aspect of this. It's the same way that we're now seeing that a lot of the diseases of modern age that we're seeing are autoimmune. And so there is a subset of the population, in some cases, a very large percent that are suffering from this because of the triggering of some kind of an autoimmune effect. Fantastic. Well, thank you for that. I'm sure that we'll get some questions from the audience, which we appreciate. We can answer on the next 
episode. But in the meantime, folks, if you would subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed this one, this episode. And please submit your questions, comments, and suggested topics at www.fdntraining.com slash science matters. And you can grab a copy of these studies at fdntraining.com slash studies. So join us, join us again in two weeks when we talk about decrease in mitochondrial genes during SARS-CoV-2 infection of rodent and human hosts because science, science matters. matters.